My name is Mark the Dark, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about video stabilization using a phone gimbal, specifically the DJI Osmo Mobile 3. Let's get it. The clip you just saw was me at the skate park recording two random people that I found, Dayton and John, they were really cool. They helped me out in making my YouTube video, which is really awesome. You'll see that the clips were pretty smooth and cinematic looking, and that's because of this. This is the DJI Osmo Mobile 3, and this is what I use to stabilize all of my videos on this channel. It's great. So when you record with your phone, it does have some stabilization built into it. This is called optical image stabilization. Now, optical image stabilization is what your phone uses to digitally correct any shakiness that your video has. Your phone actually does a great job of utilizing this technology. If you hold it pretty still, it will stabilize the image the best it can, but it's not gonna do the same thing that a phone gimbal can do for you. So let's head back to the skate park so I can show you guys the difference between using a phone gimbal versus using your hand to record videos. So you'll notice here I have two very similar videos of Dayton skating around at the park. One is very shaky and the other one is very smooth and cinematic looking. That's because on the left hand side I'm using the DJI Osmo Mobile 3 and on the right hand side I'm using my hand. So I'm actually having to run to keep up with him because he's going pretty fast. So the optical image stabilization doesn't do a great job here at all. I need to be a bit more still in order for it to really correct itself. That results in the video being very, very shaky and unstable. On the other hand though, you'll see that the DJI, which is designed to keep the phone as stable as possible, does a great job. It's very smooth, it's very cinematic looking. Heck, it even looks professional compared to the video on the other side. Honestly, in my opinion, I think using a phone gimbal is the best thing that you can do to up your videography game because these two clips are just worlds apart. People are going to be able to tell the difference between a very shaky video and a really smooth looking video. That just makes you look good. So the DJI Osmo Mobile 3 has a lot of cool features. I'm gonna throw on my iPhone 8 Plus to it real quick. So now that the phone gimbal is on, I can show you the different cool features. Um, you have this button, which is the on button. If you tap and hold it, it turns on. However, if you double tap it, it also switches the phone's orientation. So if I double tap this, it switches to landscape. And if I double tap it, it will go right back to portrait mode, which is great. When I move my hand any which way, the phone glides really nice and smoothly side to side, any which way that I need it to move and that's what gives it the nice cinematic effect. There's also a shutter button which helps you stop and record video or take pictures as needed. There's a joystick which I don't use very often at all. On the side, you're able to use this function to zoom in and out of the video. This is a trigger. On the back, the trigger will actually align the phone if it's out of place. So if I double tap this, it will realign the phone which is great. If you hold this button, it actually keeps the phone in complete place no matter how I move my hand. If I double tap and hold like this, the response rate will go up significantly so that way I can record things that are moving pretty quickly. I didn't use that feature at the skate park because I didn't feel like I needed to. The DJI Osmo Mobile 3 also has a lot of cool features with the app that it uses which is the DJI Mimo app and it has active face tracking which I think is really neat. The active face tracking feature is pretty cool. You just select the area that you want it to track and it does a pretty great job of tracking that area. I didn't move around too much, I just kind of stayed in my chair. But if you're a bit farther away from the camera, it does a pretty good job of tracking. The DJI Mimo app also has this really cool feature that actually pieces together a story for you depending on what it is you recorded. It adds music. It's really like quick editing, but, but we, don't, we don't do that here. We, we, we really we edit our stuff. We, you know, we do all of our editing on our iPhone. This by itself, I believe, is about 120 bucks. Um, I got it with the combo kit, so it came with a really cool case and a stand that I'm able to attach, which is pretty neat, especially if you're using the face tracking. Something else that I think is really neat about the DJI Osmo Mobile 3 is the fact that it folds up. So it fits into one of the notches here, and it folds up, it's pretty compact. I can fit this in my pocket in most cases. It makes it easier to pack when I'm going places. It's great. Now my first gimbal was made by Skylabs. It's a great gimbal. I think it's something like 50 bucks on Amazon now. When I bought it, it was like, it was almost $300. It was really expensive. Don't get things brand new. I mean, of course you wanna get new things, but man. This does not fold up at all. It's really awkward. Having a phone gimbal, it puts your videos a world apart from people that use their hand to stabilize their images, which 
can work, it can work pretty well if you do it right, but it's not going to do the same thing that the DJI Osmo Mobile 3 does or any other gimbal does. I will add a link in the description below so that way you guys can check it out. I will also put a link to the video that I shot with the DJI Osmo Mobile 3, my cinematic video in San Francisco. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. We'll be doing a whole lot more videos in the future. I'll catch you guys next time.